Hey everybody, Brian Tro coming to you for Mossy Creek Fly Fishing. The date today is Monday, May 24th, and this is your fly fishing forecast. So we finally have a little bit of a chance of rain today. Gotta tell you, we're in a pretty, uh, pretty good drought. I haven't had really droughty conditions in a couple of years, um, but we've gone about three weeks now without really any consistent rain. So. You can really see it out there, the pollen's everywhere, the dust is everywhere, people's yards are turning brown. Um, some of our high mountain streams, particularly the smaller drainages, are, are really low. Um, they're fishable, the water's cold, the canopy is filled in, um, the food is there, but you're going to have to really be sneaky. So while, while we're up there, let's talk about the brook trout fishing. It's been, it's been pretty good. Um, everybody just needs to fish longer leaders, fish finer leaders. Uh, fish a little bit smaller flies so they don't twist up your leader, you know. Um, e even if you're trying to throw a big green drake, if you try and put it on 6X, it's just going to spin your leader right up. So you need to either size down your, um, your fly or size up your tippet and you may not be able to get away with that because things are just so clear and low. Um, so be on the lookout. Uh, there's definitely a chance of some thunderstorms and showers like in the 10 day. Um, and it can really make a big difference if, if it's isolated and the drainage nearest you gets uh, an inch of rain overnight, um, everything's going to shoot right back up. They're the first creeks to get the water. They're going to have oxygen. They're going to have habitat and cover, and they're going to have food. So um, the brook trout fishing is good. It's just they're spooky. Stay low. Use the natural surroundings, rocks, boulders, logs to kind of conceal yourself. Take a knee. Uh, get down a little bit low. People always ask me, like, why, why is Orvis and Patagonia put the knee pads in some of their waders? Well, that's, that's, I use mine all the time. Getting down and taking a knee uh, can really help keep you concealed from those fish, all right? Um, so food up there, pretty straightforward. Big drakes are coming. They're already hatching. Green drakes, the coffin fly. Um, the Yellowstone flies are around throughout the day. Um, and, you know, terrestrials are starting to show up. You know, brook trout have a hard time refusing a well-placed ant. So, uh, if you're on a long stretch of water like the Dry River, sometimes the key to success is finding wave trains, finding where the water's bubbling and churning and making noise. That's all going to conceal your approach. You start fishing some of those big, long pools, and they're only like a foot deep, and sometimes you scare those fish before you even get a chance, right? So, if the water stays low for a long time, everything's going to be eating them, right? The kingfishers are in there eating them. Uh, the eastern water snake eats brook trout. Um, they're just going to get picked on a lot, and the more they get picked on, the more they're going to tuck and hide. So anyway, uh, look for moving water. That'll really help. Maybe you have to cover some more pools than normal. And maybe you catch one out of the pool, and then you put the pool down, right? So just cover more water and do a little mini rain dance. Uh, the spring creeks further down, they're low -er, but they always uh, have good supply of water because they feed off the groundwater. And uh, so short-term droughts, two or three, four week droughts, aren't gonna affect the flow of a spring creek like Mossy Creek as much as they affect up high in the mountains, all right? So that being said, if you're out there and it's bluebird skies, uh, the fish have been getting a little bit skittish. So same rule applies, fish the finest tippet uh, that you can get away with, um, you know, if you're out there fishing the sulfur spinners, which is happening at like, you know, very last hour of light, you can kind of get away with a little bit thicker leader. Um, and of course, if you're fishing streamers, you don't have much of a choice. Um, so there's some drakes that are popping off on the spring creeks as well. Slate drakes, yellow drakes, some green drakes, and then you've got your sulfur. So trico hatch is really uh, starting to pick up. And those spinners are usually hitting the water around like 1030 in the morning. Um, they're gonna keep keying into those more and more and more, all right? And that's gonna be the huge hatch moving forward through the summertime. Um, sometimes people see it gets hot and nice and warm and feels like summer and they think, oh, I'm gonna go fish terrestrials, but it actually takes quite a while for those terrestrials to really show up in big numbers. You're not seeing millions of grasshoppers yet, okay? So terrestrial season is a little bit further into the summer. Not that they won't eat one randomly landing on the water, but they just haven't had a whole lot of them yet. They're very much tuned into those mayflies and the time in which they come off are gonna be the windows in which they feed the most. Um, our bigger rivers, the James and the Shenandoah, they're getting low. Um, they're low for this time of year, but they're kind of like what the flow would be 
regularly in August, okay? So that's kind of nice. You know, post-spawn can be a really tough time to catch smallmouth. A lot of people think, oh, they come off their beds and they're so hungry. That's true, they are. But the, the feeding conditions in the river this time of year favor the fish, okay? So a lot of you have heard me talk about this before, but there's components of that stream dynamic that go through the summer that really shift the advantage to the angler. One is the star grass, okay? We need that star grass, which is a healthy grass, to grow up in the river. If you don't know what the star grass is, it starts off as short strands. It can grow all the way up to the surface and it'll bloom in the late summer. It has a little yellow flower that looks like a star on it. And that's a really critical part of the, the summertime cycle. What'll happen is as those grasses grow, all the bait will move into it. And once all the bait moves into it, the fish have to work much harder for their food, which means your fly becomes a lot more important to them, all right? Uh, I was on the river several days last week. Even five, six, eight inch smallmouth literally had huge plump stomachs. And so they're just foraging. They can go and grab food so easily. There's bait balls just sitting right in the middle of the river. So as easily as we can open up the refrigerator and pull a drink out, that's how easily they're feeding. So it takes a little bit more coaxing this time of year, a little more teasing. The good news is the river is like half the flow of what it normally is. So that concentrates them. It helps you sight fish so you can really see the fish and uh, get feedback from them, whether they like your color or they like your retrieve rate or not. Um, that helps a lot. Normally in May, the river is just big and, and we don't get um, a lot of good read on whether we're getting refused or we're simply just not in front of them. So as I've been mentioning over the last couple weeks, where we are in the spawn, the smallmouth are pretty much done. They're out there, they're trying to eat, they're getting starting to push off into their summer lies. The largemouth are on their nests. So if you see largemouth bass actively spawning or males guarding the nest, leave them alone. It's pretty easy to find out where those fish are. You can fish the river fine without bothering them. Uh, the sunfish are starting to go on their nests too. The catfish are about to spawn. The carp are active. So there's a lot going on. It's like an aquarium. It's pretty awesome to go out there and float and see. Um, so that's where we're at with the rivers. Um, you know, normally we don't talk about top water bite for smallmouth bass until a little later in the summer when water temperatures get up and your damselflies and your dragonflies and your dog day cicadas are, start showing up. Um, but there's definitely some top water fishing to be done and that's because the river's low. So if fish is sitting in two feet of water, it's just as easy to eat off the top as it is the bottom. And that's kind of where we're at with our low water conditions, okay? So maybe there's not a lot of there's not a ton of dragonflies and damselflies, yeah. So top water for bass doesn't have to be in bugs, right? Um, we have plenty of bait fish patterns that float. Uh, we have Todd's wiggle minnows um, that, that kind of count down. You've got uh, hair bugs, you know, Whitlock swimming frogs, things like that, that just make a lot of noise, draw some attention up. Um, we got the Murdich minnows was really good last week. Um, they kind of suspend, although we have, we have floating ones as well. Uh, but a lot of sight fishing going on, which is always really exciting. So, um, and it's going to hit 90 this week a couple times. I think it's the first time, at least here in the valley, we're going to hit 90. So you're going to see water temperatures go up. And when that happens, so too will the small mouse metabolism. They eat a lot more when the water's 80 than when it's 66. So it's the way that they work. Um, so anyway, lots of good stuff out there. Don't forget to submit and take pictures. We've got this great I'd Rather Beer Fishing contest going with Three Notch Brewery. It's super fun. Um, they have great prizes like free fishing days with us, free fly rods, and free beer for a year. All right, great prizes. All you gotta do is submit pictures. Uh, there's different categories, drum, bass, trout, and ugliest fish. It can mean anything. So um, you can check that out through uh, Instagram, uh, I'd Rather Beer Fishing. Um, they have a website set up too. So anyway, uh, the beers are all over the state. People are really enjoying them. So uh, hopefully uh, your local grocery store will, will have some of those as well. Anyway, that's about it. As always, give us a call. There's going to be some storms around this week uh, that may, may hit certain spots and may not. Uh, we'll do our best to keep track of those. So as we head into the big Memorial Day weekend, um, we'll be on top of things. Let us know. Call us this week. We'll give you an update on the best places to go and help spread people out on the water to have a wonderful holiday weekend. Awesome. See you next week.